Hello guys. How are you all? We are Revenger What Ifs. So in this video, we will see what if Naruto had Chaos Energy Bloodline. Read the summary and other details given in the description. But before we start, if you want more interesting stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now let's start the story. Minato this is all your fault. After I give birth to this baby I'm gonna take what makes you a man so this doesn't happen again. This is what most patients in Kanaha's hospital heard as the voice blasted through the building with the force of a hurricane. The cause of this was a very beautiful red-haired woman, who was going through the joys of bringing new life into the world. Well most people would classify it as joyous, however the fiery redhead didn't see if that was as she was the woman going through all the agony. I'm sorry you have to go through this Kashina Chan. Groaned out the man whose hand was currently ensnared by his wife's smaller hand which was crushing his from the sheer pressure of it being squeezed. Anyway wasn't it your idea to have a child? Asked the man only to wince in pain again as his small wife began squeezing even harder. What was that Minato Koi, the woman now identified as Kashina, spoke in a sickly sweet voice before crying out in pain and pushing again. The male, now known as Minato, winced again as he swore he heard some of the bones in his hand begin to crack. The doors burst open and a teenager wearing a mask and had a headband slanted over his eye burst in. The most distinctive feature the young man sported was his silver hair that spiked straight upwards. Hokage-sama, there are sightings of the Kayubi no Kitsune coming straight at the village. Gasped out the young man as he panted, evidently from the speed he had been traveling. Everyone in the room froze, except Kashina, who was still trying to push the baby out. Kakashi, please. Please tell me this is some sort of stick-twisted joke, otherwise you better start digging your grave immediately, whispered Minato in a hushed voice. Kakashi shook his head rapidly. I'm sorry Hokage-sama, but this is not a joke. It will be here in 20 minutes at the pace it is going. Minato swore colorfully, the strongest known biju was heading straight to their village. This was catastrophic. Trying to stop a biju was like trying to beat Kashina in a ramen-eating contest. It just wasn't possible. Quickly trying to formulate a plan Minato quickly barked out orders. If anything this news took his mind off of his hand being crushed. Kakashi, you and every able ninja are going out there to try and stop the demon. We must not let it reach the village walls. Otherwise this village is lost. Go now. With that the silver-haired teen shot off at speeds that would have matched the horizon. Suddenly a baby's scream rang through the air snapping everyone in the room out of their stupor. The doctors immediately rushed back to Kushina's aid. Congratulations, Kushina, you have given birth to a perfectly healthy baby girl, spoke the doctor proudly. Minato smiled, until Kushina's scream, once again, pierced the air like a knife. Oh god we weren't expecting twins, gasped out Kushina as she cried in agony again. Minato was frantic, he needed to go out to confront the demon but he didn't want to leave the love of his life in the middle of her labor, Kashina, sensing his dilemma quickly cupped his face with her hand. Go, Minato-kun, you are needed at the battlefield. Whispered the pained red head. Minato still looked torn, that was until an absolutely evil killing intent raced through the air, petrifying everyone in the room. Don't worry, Minato, spoke a blonde-haired woman, known as Tsunade. I'll make sure your wife is going to be fine, count on it. That was all Minato needed. Kissing his love and promising he would return, he shot out of the room in a flash of yellow. It had been 20 minutes, since the Kitsune had begun its attack. Already the death tolls were staggering, over 1,000 people had already died and it was steadily climbing. Minato was distraught, he had tried to come up with a plan. Unfortunately he had no idea what to do. Jiraiya, his sensei was currently out there rallying the troops. His thoughts were interrupted when an aged man strode through the door. This man was known as Serutobi Hirazan, the Sandame Hokage. Minato, there is only one way we will win this fight. Spoke the old war veteran. We need to create a Jinchuriki. Minato looked at his predecessor in disgust. There was no way in the nine layers of hell would he subject a child to that fate. Just as he was about to voice his protest Serutobi cut him off. Look Minato. I don't like this any more than you do, however it is the only sure fire way to stop a biju. I will perform the sealing. 
You need to raise your family and are a much more suitable person for the Hokage spot than me. The old man explained. Minato sighed. Serutobi had raised some valid points. Fine then, but use one of my children. Kashina was carrying twins. If there is a boy, take him. I will not subject a girl to the torment as more horrible things can happen to her than a boy. I might not always be able to protect the child. I will summon Gamabunta to aid you. Farewell, old man. Serutobi nodded his farewell and left in a swirl of leaves. Minato sighed and left for the battlefield. Moments later Serutobi burst into the room Kashina was residing in and his face fell. She looked so peaceful even with all the killing intent, cradling her daughter. He looked to the left of the bed and say a crib with a baby boy inside. Making himself known he walked into the room. Kashina, I have made a plan to stop the biju. We have no choice but to make a jinchuriki. We will be using your little boy as the host. Minato will never use someone else's child. When Kashina heard this she flew into a rage. What? Have you finally gone senile old man? I'll never let you use my little Naruto for the prison. Minato wouldn't allow it. Serutobi sighed, he knew this was going to happen. He prepared to tell Kashina a lie, knowing that it would rip the family apart if she knew the truth. I know Minato would never agree. That is why I knocked him out. Right now we need to defend our village. I'm incredibly sorry Kashina-chan, I will perform the sealing. You and Minato were like a daughter and son to me. With that he snatched Naruto from his crib and left for the battlefield with Kashina screaming at him to bring back her child. Serutobi arrived back on the battlefield and his anger rose. All around him were dead and wounded. Minato appeared beside him and quickly summoned Gamabunta. With a quick farewell and thanks Serutobi proceeded to summon the Shinigami, sealing the mighty Kyubi no Kitsune in the small body of Naruto. I'm sorry, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, I'm sorry as burden falls to your hands. But you will have a loving family and you'll grow strong. With those final words the Sandame Hokage, also known as the God of Shinobi, passed away. Minato arrived at the site of the ceiling a few minutes later and was horrified at the sight he saw. Instead of looking at a normal little baby he was staring at possibly the most demonic-looking child he had ever seen. The child's little nails, were shaped like claws, his canine teeth were already grown and they were definitely razor sharp. And when Minato looked in his eyes, he saw the Kyuubi's eyes staring straight back at him. He noticed the seal was glowing red. As he steeled himself to kill the small boy that was once his son in front of him the boy changed. His nails receded, his canines grew shorter, though they were still there and his eyes changed back to blue, the same type of blue his eyes held. Minato slowly put the kanai away and tentatively picked up the child, prepared to kill it at a moment's notice. However when little Naruto was picked up his giggled and gurgled at the man holding him, trying to grab the older man's hair he relaxed slightly. Minato smiled slightly at that, but then he remembered what the child had looked like previously. The seal was still prominent on the boy's stomach, however when Minato looked at it again it was now black like it was supposed to be. He came up with the solution that the Kyubi was trying to break through the seal whilst it was at its weakest as it was brand new, flooding the baby with chakra. But the seal had held fast trapping the demon. However as Minato raced back to Konoha with the baby, a shadow clone carrying the late Sandame, he pondered what to do with the boy. People had seen the ceiling. He couldn't tell everyone it had been killed. Also he didn't want his family to lose face by having a demon holder in their name. They had finally got recognition, and Minato wanted to keep that recognition at all cost. He formulated a plan. Eight years later, it had been a tough eight years for little Uzumaki Naruto. For eight eight he had been on the receiving end of constant hatred. Kicked out of the orphanage at six, the small blonde-haired boy had hidden away, making a small house for himself in the red light district. It was dangerous for a little boy to be wandering around there but it was where Naruto felt safest, he discovered he was less likely to be attacked here than anywhere else. However, right now it was midnight October the 10th, today was actually Naruto's 8th birthday. The small child had had enough to be honest. No one told him of his parents. His hero, the Yandaimi Hokage, would never tell him, often directing the questions away. So Naruto decided to sneak into the Hokage's tower to look for any sigh of details about him. He had just slipped past four Anbu squads and crept into the Hokage's office. 
giving the room a through search Naruto was about to give up until he tripped. His brought his hand up to catch himself on the desk. Unfortunately, or in this case fortunately for the boy, his hand came down on a thumb tack that was sticking up from the desk. Hissing in pain he shook his hand and a few drops of blood landed on a previously unopened scroll. Naruto was about to turn away when the scroll glowed slightly and unraveled. Curiously settling in Naruto began to read the scroll. What he saw made his anger skyrocket and blood boil. It was his profile. Profile of Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, written by the Yandaimi Hokage. Top secret this will not be his OFFICAL records. Name. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto blood type. O positive. Known family members. Namikaze Minato, father, Namikaze Uzumaki Kashina, mother, Namikaze Uzumaki Sukuroka, twin sister. Age. 8 Social Standing. Academy student in Jinchuriki of the Kayubi no Kitsune. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto is the heir of the Namikaze Uzumaki clan and its bloodline. However due to the Yandaimi Hokage, who is also clan head not wanting his clan to lose the honor they had recently gotten due to the third ninja war decided to abandon Naruto, saying he was an orphan whose mother passed away during childbirth and father, who died trying to hold off the Kayubi. This could potentially lead to a lot of problems when Naruto unlocks his bloodline. The bloodline of the Uzumaki clan is very potent. It is called Chaos Energy. This doubles as a stronger, more potent chakra, like the Hatake's white chakra. However this bloodline is classified as better due to the unique moves that come with this new energy. As the power itself is more destructive so are the jutsus used. Naruto has the potential to be the biggest chakra powerhouse in history. With the Kyubi sealed inside him, it steadily increases his chakra as well as chaos energy reserves reserves. Also if he is trained well enough he may be able to harness the unfathomable power of Kyubi itself. It was decided that we hide his burden as it may cause him to go on a rampage. With potential power that resides in Naruto this could be catastrophic. It is considered that Naruto be trained as a personal weapon for Konoha. We are hoping Naruto doesn't find out about his heritage as he is the real heir of the Namikaze Uzumaki clan even though his twin is older by 15 minutes as the heir of the clan is decided by the amount of chaos energy that they wield, making the heir the strongest in the clan translating to the strongest clan member being the head of clan. We can not risk Naruto finding out his clan status no matter what. End profile, A, N personally I think this sucked. Please tell me if it did and any help in writing this would be greatly appreciated. Naruto finished reading the report and growled quietly. He had been lied to his whole life. His life was made miserable, just because of bigoted fools who either cared about their social standing or were just to wrapped up in their blind hatred. Snarling not unlike a fox he rolled the scroll up and slipped it into his pocket. He had wasted enough time and then got what he came for. Instead of sneaking back out Naruto just climbed out of the window and just slide down the Hokage's tower landing in a stack of hay that was conveniently placed there. Quickly climbing out of the hay stack Naruto brushed himself off and ran home as fast as he could. It wouldn't do for the villagers to find him now and discover the scroll he had borrowed, permanently. Unfortunately luck was not on his side as he ran by a bunch of men who were drunk as newts. Hey ish doer Dion rat. Slurred one of the morbidly drunk civilians. Naruto cursed quietly as if by signal every one came out of their houses carrying weapons. Naruto to one look and bolted. Naruto sprinted down the back roads of Konoha, glad for once about his insane stamina, however he was beginning to wonder where the villagers got their stamina from. Was it just the sheer will to try and kill him that pushed them on? Naruto cursed as he ran into a dead end. Inwardly berating himself he turned round to find the mob blocking the exit. Naruto looked at the group and grimaced. If the found the scroll they would take it. He would not allow that to happen. At all costs he must protect that scroll. One of the mobsters charge at him first. Suddenly a small twinge of pain went through Naruto's head. He slid into a very unfamiliar stance and as the man got in range to strike Naruto slipped in slightly sliding past the man's guard and sent a punch straight to the mon's voice box with enough force to kill the man. As the man dropped to the floor the rest of the mob just gawked at him. In all the other beatings they had given him he had never fought back. This scared them. The demon is breaking free. Kill him before it gains full control. Screamed a pink-haired woman. 
The mob roared and charged. Naruto was effectively crapping himself. He was really going to die here. Suddenly the world began to spin. When Naruto's head stopped spinning he realized he wasn't in the alley anymore. In fact he was in a sewer. However he knew these sewers weren't Kanahas, those sewers didn't have this oppressive ominous feelings. Deciding to investigate Naruto wandering through the twists and the turns following the aura that was steadily getting worse. Eventually Naruto arrived in front of a massive gate that was held together but a tiny piece of paper with the kanji, seal, written on it. All of a sudden a massive wave of killer intent struck Naruto full force making him reel back a bit. Suddenly there was a massive shadow on the other side of the cage and two enormous red eyes with black slits stared back at him. Quickly putting two and two together he called out. Oi fox, how did you call me and why am I here? The massive figure moved into view and Naruto gawked at the sheer size of the beast. It was easily twenty stories tall and emanated power. Well well well, my jailer finally graces me with his presence. Boomed a deep voice coming from the fox. Just the voice itself was enough to blow Naruto back a bit, confirming the power wasn't just for show. Yeah I came. Didn't really have a choice, now why did you call me? I have a mob about to beat the shit out of me. Asked the eight-year-old. Kayubi was baffled, no one had ever not been afraid of it. Usually they ran screaming like four-year-old girls, but this child was different. He didn't care that he was speaking with the most powerful being in existence. I called you here to have a little chat with you, Namakaze Uzumaki Naruto. We have plenty to discuss. And in here it is as if time had frozen on the outside. Naruto snarled at the name. Just call me Naruto of if you must Uzumaki Naruto. I have no intention of being related at all to that man. Kayubi just nodded. It could at least grant that request and not antagonize his container. It wanted this to go as smoothly as possible. It was easier to negotiate with a calm person than one riled up. Very well, Kit. Now let us begin. I want to help you because frankly I'm stuck here for as long as it takes for you to die and I refuse to be held by a weak container. Now as you know you have a bloodline. This is the perfect bloodline for you and me to be honest because chaos energy is basically a more potent form of your energy chakra. My energy, called Yuki is the most potent stuff you will find. Now what I propose we do is let me help you focus your bloodline. It's destructive, devastating and powerful. Three things that make anything awesome. The fox spoke. This left Naruto with plenty of questions. A few questions fox. One. Why are you helping me? 2. Why do you care how strong I am? 3. How destructive are we talking about here? At the last question Naruto lip curled upwards in a sort of sneer. Seeing this the Kayubi chuckled, guessing that tonight's revelations had finally made the boy crack. Answer 1. I really don't want to experience the loss of most of my power yet. Answer 2. You currently represent me. If you look weak it makes me look weak and I will not let that happen. Answer 3. If you released all your chaos energy right now in a chaos blast move, you could probably vaporize about 40 meters of Konoha. Not bad for an 8 year old. However you would collapse in the middle of the destruction, getting you executed. Naruto looked amazed, such power, hey I think it's time we gave the village a wake up call. Oi Fox, if I released all this energy and you seep some of your Yuki into me, would I still be able to move? Asked the curious 8 year old. This made the fox ponder, technically if he flooded the child with power he would still be able to move. I guess so, but why do you ask? However your mind will probably shut down from releasing so much power. Unless I then took control of your body. Answered the enormous beast. Well if I can trust you to use my body to get the flaming hell out of there, I can destroy a portion of Konoha, some civilians, and get off scot-free. The Kayubi smirked at the reply. The kid was going to go down a dark path, and it would be there to guide him down it. You have my word, sworn on my honor as a demon that I will take you straight home. Naruto grinned maliciously at the answer. Thank you Kayubi, now how would I go about drawing all this energy out? The old demon pondered again. I would say the same way you use chakra, just dig past chakra until you hit a more evil feeling energy. You'll know if it was mine trust me, you have already felt it. Naruto nodded and slowly began to disappear from his smirk darkly, its container was about to unleash hell and he could be free for a few hours. All it had to do now was watch the fireworks fly. 
Naruto suddenly shifted back into consciousness to see the mob had barely moved. Digging deep he went past the familiar feeling of his chakra and felt a large what felt like ocean of darker power. He knew it wasn't Hubie's, it was near as evil feeling. This must be it, thought the little blonde and pulled it all out at once. Glowing red he leapt into the air by instinct and cried out, chaos blast. The mob who were charging at Naruto suddenly stopped when they felt a huge wave of power rush over them. Looking around from the source a cry of one villager got their attention. Looking at him they saw the petrified man pointing. Following his gaze they saw Naruto glow bright red before yelling out, chaos blast. The last thing the villagers saw was a massive wall of red energy racing towards them before they were blown to oblivion. Naruto looked around at the destruction he caused and smiled. That was a pretty awesome move. This was the last thought that ran through his head before he collapsed. As his body began to fall it jerked and quickly stood upright again. Checking his pockets for the scroll Naruto raced away. Or what seemed like Naruto. However he now had blood red eyes, fangs, claws and his hair was one hell of a lot wilder. Kayubi smirked, it felt good to control a body again, even if for just a small time. However neither noticed a figure watching over the whole proceeding. It had been five years since the incident where 40 meters of Konoha vanished with the only sign of it ever existing was a giant crater. No one knew what caused it or had no clue why about 30 civilians died that night. Many people suspected an attack. But there was no evidence. Some of the more extreme Kyubi haters said it was the demon returning. Yet again this was turned down due to lack of evidence. The container for the demon was in bed during the explosion. And there was no way an eight-year-old could cross the entire village in five minutes. The cause of the destruction, now 13-year-old Uzumaki Naruto, was currently leaping from rooftop to rooftop heading in the direction of the academy. Two days ago had been the day for academy students to take the test and graduate, finally becoming a recognized shinobi. He had passed with flying colors. How pathetic, only needing to perform three E-rank techniques to graduate. No wonder we have the highest rate of failing genin, thought the blonde-haired teen as he landed on the academy roof. Naruto was no longer a short scrawny eight-year-old. His body had already began to mature, his dark tank top and khaki trousers tight around his lithely muscled body. He had a pitch-black trench coat swaying slightly in the breeze hiding his sword which was sheathed on his back. He stood at 5 foot 2 inches tall, an impressive height for a 13-year-old. Then again he looked like a carbon copy of his father, who was a tall man himself. Naruto figured he was early so he pulled his sword out of its sheath, which rested on his back and looked at the blade. He could never get over how beautiful his blade looked. The blade was essentially one piece of metal. The entire sword was about three foot long, the tip of the blade a bright silver dulling in color, to a dark gray at the handle. The blade was wide at the handle but thinned out at the tip, like a cross between a broadsword and a rapier. One, he had affectionately named his blade, Gekko Karite, or Moonlight Cutter thanks to its special ability. Naruto's sword had the ability to absorb moonlight, increasing its cutting power immensely. The fuller the moon, the more powerful the blade. If the sun was out Naruto could project his chakra into the blade creating a projection of the moon. This allowed him to harness the sword's full abilities even with no moon. However the drawback was the chakra consumption needed to keep the projection up. The move could run him dry in 10 minutes, not counting the energy he would spend fighting. The teen still remembered how he came to collect his sword. Flashback. Gets shot. Naruto is 10 it had been 2 years since Naruto first used his chaos energy and blown up a part of Konoha. The boy had smirked when they never figured out what happened. He grinned inwardly at the fools as he practiced using his chaos energy. He always hid deep in the forest to practice so people wouldn't find out about his abilities. He smirked when he discovered his sister didn't even know about her powers. Evidently the Yandaimi and his wife were keeping it a secret from her. He had found out though that if he didn't have the Kayubi in his body Naruto would have killed himself when he devastated Konoha two years ago due to his body not being able to handle the strain. He had been practicing for hours and was exhausted. As he tried to draw more chaos energy his body gave out and he crashed to the floor. Groaning he woke up to find himself in a sewer again. However this time there was another presence. It felt extremely soothing. Curiously Naruto followed the feeling until he walked right into the middle of a grassy meadow. The thing that really caught his attention was the moon itself. 
Naruto always felt some connection to the moon. He always felt relaxed when he gazed at the moon as it made him feel that someone out there was watching over him. I see you have finally arrived young one. Naruto spun round and his jaw almost hit the floor. The person in front of him was so beautiful it was mind-blowing. Her skin was deathly pale, yet gave off a beautiful glow. Her hair fell to the curve in her back, pitch black in color. Standing at 5 foot 3 inches tall with an hourglass figure and long slender legs Naruto just gawked at her. He had never seen anyone so beautiful. The figure in front of him giggled slightly. Naruto shuddered. Her laugh was as beautiful as her. Light and melodious, the figure tilted her head cutely and asked, Yes. Why are you staring at me like that? Naruto still entranced by the woman in front of him could only utter out one word. Beautiful. The woman blushed. She wasn't expecting such an open compliment. My name is Sukuyomi. Hello Naruto-kun. This snapped Naruto out of his thoughts. Sukuyomi. Sukuyomi. Where have I heard that name before? Then it clicked. You have the same name as the goddess of the moon. Exclaimed Naruto in awe. Sukuyomi chuckled again. Even though he was stoic and cold, on the inside he was still a lovable person to new people. Naruto-kun. You are correct. I am Sukuyomi herself. I have wanted to ask you a favor. Naruto was shocked speechless for the second time in the space of three minutes. The deity of the moon wanted to ask him something. I will help you if I can Sukuyomi-sama. Naruto spoke quietly. Sukuyomi smiled again, maybe he could help her after all. Naruto-kun, I would like for you to wield my blade, Gekko Karite, it is blessed by me itself, having the power to absorb and cut through moonlight. There are rumors of someone wielding Suzano on this plane. No one should be wielding the sword of a god. However I trust you. I know no matter how much you hate people you will only direct your hatred on the source, not everything around you. Please, help me bring Suzano's sword back to him. At this Sukuyomi got on her knees. Naruto looked shocked. Here was a goddess on her knees essentially begging him to help. Walking over to the beautiful full goddess Naruto crouched down and placed a hand on her should. Sukuyomi, it will be an honor to complete this task for you. He was immediately tackled by an ecstatic goddess who was thanking him over and over again. When she released him she placed her hands near the center of her chest. A light began to shine and a few moments later a blade almost as beautiful as its owner appeared in her hands. Sukuyomi walked over to Naruto and placed the magnificent blade onto his hand. This is Gekko Karite. It can absorbs and cut through moonlight making it deadly when you are fighting at night. If the moon isn't out or it is daytime, focus your chakra into the sword and think of the moon. The sword will create a projection of the moon enhancing its abilities to that of fighting at night time. However this will take a lot of chakra to hold in place, as well as you will be wasting energy as well fighting so be careful. With that Sukuyomi began to disperse into little balls of light that the sword then absorbed. Once the light disappeared Naruto got knocked out of his mind. Flashback. End. Naruto's hand ran up and down the flat of the blade caressing it softly like someone caressing a lover. His sword was a very important possession, like an extension of himself. He also treasured it greatly as it was his first ever gift and to keep his promise. The academy bell ringing brought him out of his reverie. Sheathing his sword and placing it on his back he felt the sword pulse slightly in disappointment. His sword was sentient, having a mind of its own, thanks to Sukuyomi. As the sword was essentially female it also liked to be held gently and shown love. Five minutes later Naruto strolled through the classroom doors and took a seat as far away from everyone as possible. He never really got on with his class. He always played down his skills and acted as though he was the middle of the class. After all he saw no reason to show off in the lower leagues, that would lead to overconfidence, and that in turn would get him killed. However many students didn't realize that and always did their best to show off. Like Uchiha Sasuke and Namikaze Uzumaki Sukiroka. It disgusted him that they flaunted their talents so obviously, acting all high and mighty just because of their clan status. Naruto had laughed himself senseless when his sister came into class last year bragging she could finally use her bloodline. Naruto, sharing the same bloodline as her personally felt disgusted. It took her that long to feel such anger, sadness and depression to actually unlock their power? Then again Kashina had come back from a mission severely injured. It was touch and go especially when they almost lost her. Pathetic little girl. 
Well to be honest they are all pathetic. They have no idea on what it means to be a ninja. Thought the teen as he lay his sword in the table in front of him and began to pray. This had become a common thing whenever he had the time to do so. It felt like it helped him bond with his goddess, as well as Blade. He ignored all the odd looks until he felt a small weight on his shoulder, he looked up to see Shikamaru, the local lazy genius and one of the only people Naruto didn't mind staring at him quizzically. Naruto watched Shikamaru's eyes wander to his blade and back and shrugged. This was what Naruto liked about Shikamaru and found him tolerable, he never bothered prying into anyone's business. Unfortunately for Naruto the three people he hated most walked in. Haruno Sakura, Yamanaka Ino and Namikaze Uzumaki Sukiroka. They was all arguing who should get with Sasuke. Pathetic weaklings, and they wonder why they are so weak. If they spent the same amount of time training than they did fawning over Sasuke they would be able to take me down, possibly. He looked in front of him and saw Sasuke sitting in front of him trying to ignore all the screeching. Naruto was about to block everything out again and contact Tsukuyomi, or Yomi-chan as she asked him to call her, until a female voice screamed into his ear. Oi loser, where did you get that sword? I command you to give it to me this instant. The volume of the voice deepened Naruto temporarily. He did feel a great deal of rage though. He turned to see Sukuyoroka standing next to him her hand held out expectantly. Whilst Naruto had adopted most of his father's look Tsukiroka had definitely gotten her looks from her mother. Crimson hair that fell to her shoulder blades, piercing green eyes and a small figure. Naruto just looked at her and chuckled. You think, that you are worthy to handle Gekko Karite. Foolish little moon, to learn your place before you ask of something. With that Naruto swung his blade, narrowly missing Tsukiroka's nose and sheathing it once more. At the Hokage's office the Junin instructors were watching the proceedings in the classroom though the special crystal ball the Hokage owned. They saw the interaction between the two and the Junin all stared at the Hokage from across the desk. Heisa the one with the blade is my apprentice huh? Good, looks like he has the means to be a great swordsman. He named his sword, meaning he is on some connection with it. Spoke a man whilst coughing every few words. He was Gekko Hayate one of Kanaha's best swordsmen. Kakashi looked at his group and sighed. No offense sensei but your daughter seems to be a spoiled brat. Came the comment from the lazy Junin. Namakaze Minato, the Yandiami Hokage just sighed. He was afraid this would happen. They had been far too lenient with her growing up. As such she had turned into a fangirl, sure she was the strongest Kunoichi but because of her sheltered life he was positive Naruto had more chaos energy than she did. He was worried about what had happened five years ago. That massive explosion and all the missing people worried him. The destruction was similar of that to Kushina's chaos blast attack. But he dismissed that, believing Naruto would never be able to harness the power. Lying to Kushina about Naruto worried him as well. He had told her Naruto had died by the time they found him. When she saw the container he played off the similarities as the child the demon was sealed into as changing the child's looks to the first person it saw with its eyes. Kashina hadn't laid eyes on the boy since. Minato dismissed the Junin and sighed, thinking back on all the mistake he made about Naruto since the Kyubi attack. Back in the classroom everything was deathly quiet. Naruto, an orphan with unknown parentage, had just insulted the heiress of the Namikaze clan. Naruto could see his twin's face getting more and more red as time passed on. Hey Oroka, are you constipated? If so I recommend laxatives. Spoke Naruto in a dull voice whilst he heard an light melodious chuckle from Tsukuyomi. Before Tsukiroka could lay into Naruto, Aruka walked through the door. Standing in front of his desk Aruka looked around at his students for the last time. Activating the, demonic big-headed jutsu, he screamed, all of you shut up hell up. The class shut up instantly. Tsukiroka huffed in annoyance and shoved a random kid out of the way to sit next to Sasuke. Naruto just tuned Aruka out until he was deafened once again by a shrill screech. He looked around and saw Tsukuroka and Sakura cheering about being on Sasuke's squad. Naruto tapped Sasuke on the shoulder and gave him a pitying look, as to which Sasuke responded with a nod. Naruto may have hated Sasuke, but he wouldn't wish his kind of fate on anyone. Naruto listened as Team 8, Hayuga Hanada, Inazaka Kiba and Aburame Shino under Yuhi Kuranai and Team 10, Yamanaka Ino, 
Nara Skinamaru and Akamichi Choji under Seru Tobi Asuma were read out. Then he heard his name. Uzumaki Naruto you are under the apprenticeship of Gekko Hayate to be trained as a free response ninja. Spoke Uruka, looking at Naruto, who nodded in return. This will be the last time I see you all in a very long time. Good luck in your careers. Your senseis will be here in an hour. And with that the scarred chunin walked out of the door. The crimson-haired girl spun around to give Naruto a piece of her mind she saw him leap out of the window. Rushing to see what was happening she saw Naruto do a series of flips before landing in a cat-like crouch and jumping away. She openly gaped at him. He had just jumped out of a window three stories high like it was nothing. Naruto was sat on the classroom windowsill an hour later when the classroom door opened and three adults walked in. The one with the sword spoke first, who had to pause in the middle due to a coughing fit. Uzumaki Naruto. Meet me at training grounds 13 in 15 minutes. Then he vanished. Naruto hopped off the window sill and began to free fall towards the ground before taking off in the direction of the training grounds. He began to cast assumptions on his sensei. He was obviously a swords master as well as sick. However just because he was ill didn't make him any less deadly in short fights. Naruto arrived at training ground 13 right on time. He walked up to his soon-to-be sensei studying him. The man stood at about 5 foot 10 inches tall with his headband customized to hide his hair as well as cover his forehead. His sword was strapped to his back and had a red handle contained in a black sheath. He noticed the man smiling at his as he approached. Looking at his watch the man said, dead on time. Good, that is when ninja are meant to appear. Please come sit down in front of me. Every few words were spaced by slight coughing. Hey are you okay? Asked Naruto. He wasn't really concerned but this man hadn't done anything to him yet, therefore making him neutral in Naruto's book. The man nodded. Yeah I'll be fine, anyway I would like for us to introduce ourselves. I'll start, my name is Gekko Hayate and my sword is called aka Takai, or Red Death if you prefer, named after my sensei's title. My likes are my girlfriend and my sword. My dislikes are my illness and people who prejudge. My hobbies are practicing kenjutsu and being with my girlfriend. My dream is to be a world-renowned swordsman and start a family. Know you know a bit about me, tell me about yourself. Coughed out Hayate. Naruto nodded. Very well, my name is Uzumaki Naruto. My likes are my blade, Gekko Karite, or Moonbeam Cutter. It has its name because of its ability. I also like Sukuyomi Sama. My dislikes are people who judge before they know and blinded idiots. I also hate the demon trapped inside me. Before you ask I know because I'm not stupid. Doesn't take a genius to add it the insults and such. My hobbies are training, and training. My dream? I have no dreams. My goal is to aid Sukuyomi Sama in any way possible. Also my goal is to find someone who loves me, even if I have to leave the village to do so. Hayate sat there thinking about the information the blonde had given him. Why do you keep referring to Sukuyomi? Asked the sickened Junin as he stared at Naruto's blade. The reason is Gekko Karite is actually the blade of the goddess, Sukuyomi. I am allowed to wield the blade so long as I follow Sukuyomi-sama's wish. So far she is the only person to care about me unconditionally. Therefore I will follow her to the deepest pits of hell if I must. Spoke Naruto with such conviction that Hayate realized the teen wasn't joking. Anyway, when am I taking the real genin test? There is no way that test at the academy was the actual graduation test. If it was that was a joke. Hayate looked at his possible student with a mixture of awe and surprise. The kid certainly knew his stuff. He looked underneath the underneath and came up with a valid conclusion. Correct Naruto-kun, that wasn't the actual exam. That exam is tomorrow at 6.30 in the morning on training ground 7. You will be taking it with team 7, I'm sure you remember who it consists of. Naruto's reaction to the team was far from pleasant, indicating he did indeed remember. So I'm taking the test with a brooder and two excuses for Kunoichi. Perfect. Sukuyomi-sama what have I done to displease you? Hayate then watched Naruto draw his blade lying it flat on his crossed legs and begin to pray. Two minutes later Naruto sheathed his sword and got up, muttering about not visiting her enough his ass. Will I be getting tested by you or Team 7's sensei Hayate Senpei? Asked Naruto as he dusted off his clothes and stretched. You will be getting tested by Hitaki Kakashi, Team 7's possible sensei. 
Good luck Naruto, it will be fun to teach you if you pass. I hope you do. Smiled Hayate as he began to walk away. Naruto looked at the man, quietly smiling. I will make sure I pass senpai, it would be an honor to be taught by a kenjutsu specialist. With that Naruto raced away to prepare for his test. It was 6.30 in the morning when Naruto walked into the middle of training ground 7. Noticing the rest of the team wasn't there he walked up to the training posts and placed his blade again the post leaned again the post next to it. A few minutes later he saw two kunoichi of the team walking into the arena looking half asleep. They didn't even notice him sat next to the posts meditating. Sasuke showed up about 15 seconds later, looking in a much better condition than the girls, at least he was awake. It was just hitting 9 in the morning and Kakashi still hadn't shown up. Naruto didn't mind as it gave him more time to continue bonding with his sword. Sasuke was brooding and both girls were about to blow their tops. Suddenly there was a small wave of wind as Kakashi appeared. Naruto was immediately on guard. He could feel power rolling off him. After getting nearly deafened by twin screeching, Kakashi making up a crap excuse and getting deafened again Naruto's patiences finally wore thin. Will you two harpies shut the hell up? Christ next time I work with this team I'm getting earplugs. And Kakashi-san. Think of a better excuse. The three genin from Team 7 spun round to see Naruto stand up, pick up his sword, dust himself off and walk over. Naruto looked at their shocked faces and sighed. You lot need to work on your awareness. I was here since 6.30 on the dot. Been watching you for two and a half hours without you realizing. Spoke Naruto as he stood next to them. So what is the test Kakashi? Kakashi I smiled and pulled out three bells. Before he could explain those Sukuroka butt in. Ne Kaka Sensei why is the loser here? Shouldn't he be taking his own test? Well Naruto is here because as he is a free response ninja, designed to work with any and all teams he has to take a test with a different team. This clicked something inside Naruto's head. Kakashi kept going on about teams. Naruto smiled slightly, something Kakashi caught. Damn I spoke too much, seems like he is the only one who caught on, something the Kunoichi and Rookie of the Year weren't able to. Naruto ignored all the pointless questions the two females were asking Kakashi and only listened to his explanation. As soon as Naruto heard Kakashi yell go he sprung into action. Immediately throwing three shuriken Naruto charged straight at Kakashi using high genin speed. Throwing a punch at the man, who had sidestepped the throwing stars Naruto found his punch blocked quickly drew a kanai and tapped slightly into his chaos reserves Naruto's arm speed increased dramatically catching the cycloptic Junin off guard. Kakashi ducked at the last second only to see a few strands of hair fall in front of his face as he moved faster than Naruto could track to get behind him. Naruto was stunned. He cursed mentally, he had underestimated his opponent, that would have killed him if he was in a real fight. I'm impressed. You actually took of a few of my hairs. I wasn't expecting that came the voice behind him. Naruto quickly blurred out of existence and reappeared 20 meters to the left of his previous position. He prided himself on speed but the Junin was easily far faster than he was. I underestimated you. That was foolish of me. I'm sorry that if I insulted you by doing so. Spoke Naruto monotonously as he drew Gekko Karait. Naruto then held his sword out to the side. Sukuyomi-sama, please, give me your blessing spoke Naruto as his sword glowed again. The sword pulsed again and there was a woman only an inch taller than Naruto standing next to him. Kakashi gaped at Naruto. He watched what could only be a goddess smile, kiss Naruto and vanish again with a faint pulse of light. He also felt Naruto's chakra levels rise dramatically. I'm going all out Kakashi Senpei. Lunar gaze. As Naruto yelled his technique he swung his sword up. Behind him appeared a moon. Kakashi was stunned. This kid could create a moon? Impossible, yet there was a moon in the sky. This is only a projection of the moon made out of my chakra. With the moon out Gekko Karit's power increases due to its ability to absorb moonlight, thus giving it a razor-sharp edge. Gekko Karit can also cut through moonlight it's so sharp. Explained Naruto as he vanished, using his chaos energy to pump power into his legs. Kakashi quickly pulled out a kunai and tried to block Naruto's blade that was on a course for his head calling his bluff. Kakashi was lucky he also ducked as he saw the sword slice straight through the kanai as if it were butter. He whistled in amazement as he moved in a blur as he reappeared back in the middle of the training field. 
A very nice blade. You seem to know how to wield it and combined with your speed makes you deadly. I'd say you could kill a low chunin with the maneuver you just pulled on me. Let's do the three ninja basics though. Spoke Kakashi as he settled into a taijutsu stance. Naruto nodded and slipped into his own stance. As soon as the sword was sheathed Kakashi looked up slightly and saw the moon-like projection had disappeared. Naruto took this time to race over there and land a punch on Kakashi's cheek. Kakashi looked back just in time to see Naruto's fist a foot in front of his face. Ducking sharply, Kakashi's tried to use his momentum to slam an uppercut into Naruto's chest. Naruto, guessing Kakashi's tactic leaned back eye until his hands hit the floor doing a modified back handspring, catching Kakashi off guard, earning the Cyclops a kick to the face, sending him back a few meters. Though the kid seems to pride himself on speed, doesn't mean he lacks the power thought the silver-haired adult as he rubbed his jaw slightly. He looked back at Naruto who was running at mid chunin speeds. Naruto got within 10 meters then increased his speed again throwing a knife hand attack to his midsection, which was dodged just slightly, so he followed by planting his other hand on the ground to twist his body giving him added momentum to his kick which skimmed Kakashi's legs. Your taijutsu is unorthodox and has slight openings but I would guess mid chunin due to your speed. Now then, lesson 2, ninjutsu, if you know any. With that Kakashi went through hand signs at a high genin pace. Naruto instantly recognized them and began his own at low chunin pace. Kakashi finished first. Fire style, grand fireball jutsu, a fireball 10 meters in diameter soared at Naruto's position. Naruto finished his jutsu when the fireball was 7 meters away. Earth style, mud bullets. Naruto quickly spat out two balls of mud that were fives meters in diameter each. He quickly used the splatter of mud for cover as he sunk into the ground. Kakashi looked all over the place. He was shocked that Naruto had already started using elemental jutsu. However when the two techniques collided he had disappeared. Kakashi's mental alarm began ringing and he jumped and looked down to see two hands coming out of the ground just missing his foot. Only for Naruto to fly out of the ground performing more hand signs. Earth style, 100 earth spikes. Kakashi did a quick substitution as spikes of rocks impaled the log he replaced with. That's enough with Naruto for now. Let's test the others. No way am I staying around for Genjutsu. And with that Kakashi vanished. Naruto cursed, it appeared Kakashi had got away. He had been searching for a few hours now until he heard a bell ring. Racing over to the sound he saw Sakura and Sukuroka tied up to a stump with Sasuke stood in front of them with a brooding face. Naruto landed beside Sasuke and put a hand in his pocket. Well since you are all here I'm sad to say you all fail. Spoke Kakashi in a drawl. Why am I tied to the stump instead of Naruto, release me or I'll tell daddy. Shrieked Sukuroka until Naruto pulled out a bell from his pocket. I don't fail, I retrieved a bell. When we sparred in taijutsu and I used that knife hand attack my nails are easily sharp enough to slice through string so when you barely dodged me Kakashi, my nails hit a string and I caught a bell. So I pass. Spoke Naruto calmly. This got him a smile from Kakashi, a glare from Sasuke and deafening shrieks from the two girls tied up. Hey Naruto give me that bell I deserve it more than you. I'm the daughter of the Hokage. Screamed Sukuroka, who was ignored as Naruto walked over to Sasuke and deposited the bell in his hand. You deserve it more Sasuke, at least you act like a ninja instead of a civilian schoolgirl. I got the bell by luck anyway. I'm sure you have dreams to realize, unlike those two who think being a ninja is all about guarding royalty and beating up bad guys. No one is a good guy and no one is a bad guy. The Yandaimi is praised like a hero here. But he destroyed a lot of families in Iwa when he fought in the war. If you do think like that then shape up. Or you will get killed. It would be funny finding out the Yandaimi's daughter died because she was too immature and shouted her mouth off. Spoke Naruto. Turning to Kakashi he continued. Pass Sasuke. At least he probably has a decent dream that would probably be achievable. Kakashi I smiled. So you did get the idea of this test then? Well done Naruto, he was the only one to figure out this was to test your teamwork. God knows I dropped enough hints. You all tried to do it on your own and Naruto only succeeded because I completely underestimated him because he was holding back in the academy, hiding his skills instead of flaunting them like you all did. Naruto, I'll tell Hayate that you passed. However you must stay until the end of the test. I'm giving you all a second chance. 
Naruto and Sasuke can have the lunches. You are not allowed to feed the girls anything. Understand? At Naruto's and Sasuke's nod Kakashi vanished. Sasuke stood up and cut the ropes on Sakura and Sukuroka. Hurry up and eat. I won't have you two drag me down in this test. Naruto. I know you have already passed but will you lend me your aid? Naruto just gave a curt nod in response. Suddenly lightning crackled and Kakashi appeared frowning. What did I tell you about feeding the girls? Came Kakashi's ominous voice. Naruto just said, Hey, I'm not gonna let those two drag us down from getting the bells again. Kakashi snarled and spoke, You, pass. Finished Kakashi with his eye smile. He then spoke about the hero's monument. Everyone listened to Sukuroka's outburst about how she would be on that stone. Naruto laughed at her explaining it was a stone for people Kia. When the girl asked that meant Naruto replied with it meant, killed in action. That shut her up instantly. My teammate is on this stone. He left me with some good advice. Those who abandon the rules are trash. But those who abandon their friends are worse than trash. However congratulations on making team 7. Naruto, I'll tell Hayate you passed. Spoke Kakashi. They were all about to leave when they heard Naruto sigh and begin to speak. I don't need friends and comrades. I haven't needed them when I was little, growing up alone and hated, and I don't need them now. So long as Sukuyomi sama will stay by my side I'll be okay. When I was born I was abandoned, I have lived alone, I'll fight my fate alone, and I will die alone. No one has cared for me but Sukuyomi sama, she is the only one who comforted me, guided me and helped me. Spoke Naruto as he walked away. Team 7 stared at his retreating back with mixed looks of shock pity and one face that was a sneer. You deserve to be a lone scum. I don't even know why daddy let you be a ninja. Shouted Sukuroka with a smug grin on her face. Everyone in the field including Hayate who had appeared just before she yelled it out, looked at her in disgust. Killing intent flooded the area. Everyone looked at Naruto who slowly turned around. When he looked into their eyes they saw blood-red eyes with slitted pupils staring back at them. Naruto drew Gekko Karite and screamed out for Sukuyomi to give him her blessing to kill the girl. The woman Kakashi saw earlier materialized again and kissed Naruto on the forehead before they heard a faint, do as you wish, she went too far. From the woman, before she vanished again and a moon appeared behind him. Hayate, don't block his blade, it cut through my kanai earlier like butter. Take him out fast he's starting to draw on, it, Hayate's eyes widened and drew his sword as Naruto charged at the target of his anger. Only to be cut off by bolt of lighting from Kakashi before getting kicked in the ribs by Hayate, sending him flying. Sword glowing silver Naruto swung it vertically towards Sukuroka in mid-flight and cried, eclipsing flash. A arc of silver erupted from the blade tip and raced towards Sukuroka. Kakashi appeared and got the genin out of there. There was an explosion and everyone saw the crater that had formed where the genin had been. Minato appeared in a yellow flash next to Sukuroka and immediately looked at Kakashi who was next to her whilst Hayate was engaging Naruto in a sword fight. Kakashi what the hell is going on? Why has Naruto gone berserk? Asked the Yandaimi prepared to jump in as he saw Naruto's blade cleave cleanly through a rock. As Hayate jumped away Naruto took the opportunity to spin round and charge at Sukuroka again. Eclipsing flash. Another wave of silver light shot at the brash kunoichi of Team 7 as everyone got the hell out of the area. Another explosion erupted as Naruto appeared in front of his twin and swung his blade, only to be knocked away by Minato into a tree head first. Ugh. Mark my words, you better watch your back when we do missions, I'll make you pay, bitch. Naruto spat the last word as he struggled to get up before falling back down again. Only the adults could hear a faint, I'm sorry, Sukuyomi sama before he fell unconscious, his grip loosened on his sword as it clattered from his hand. Once they were sure Naruto was out of it Minato rounded on his five subordinates. Okay people, someone mind explaining to me what the hell was going on? Roared Minato as everyone looked at Sukuroka. Hey as wasn't my fault, she exclaimed. Actually Hokage-sama this is what happened. Hayate began explaining to Minato exactly what had happened, Kakashi putting in a bit of information about before that. Needless to say Minato was angry. Rounding on Sukuroka Minato moved in front of her and delivered a swift backhand to her face with enough force to lift her off her feet and into a nearby tree. I'm disgusted with you, and when I tell your mother tonight be prepared to face hell. 
Sukuroka paled, as did the other two adults. Kashina's temper was legendary. Even Tsunade's was no match for her. Please daddy, he deserved it. He insulted me by calling me weak. Kakashi sighed, Sukuroka, you are weak. Compared to him anyway. He got the bell. You didn't. He acts like a proper ninja. Hayate walked up to Naruto and picked him up along with his sword. It shocked everyone watching when the sword gave over a silver light and a cut appeared on the back of Hayate's hand, making him drop the sword. The woman they saw earlier appeared. You lack the right to hold me, I'll only allow Naruto to hold me however if you slide me back in my sheath and put me on Naruto's back again then I will allow this. Failure to do so will be death. Hayate nodded, resolving to ask Naruto when he came to. The woman vanished and Hayate picked up the blade again and found it would let him hold it. He slid it back in its sheath and strapped it to Naruto before picking him up. I'm taking Naruto home with me. I'll be asking him some questions. Kakashi, teach your students not to antagonize someone stronger than they are. We might not be around again. With that Hayate vanished with Naruto. The rest of Team 7 and Minato looked at Sukuroka who just huffed and walked off. Minato sighed, congratulated Team 7 and vanished to combat paperwork. Hayate sat on a chair next to his bed, which was currently occupied by a knocked-out Naruto. He thought back to what had happened. That was the first time he had seen the potential danger Naruto could unleash if pushed too far. Backed by a sentient-like blade with its ability to cut through anything and unleash shockwaves and his sheer speed it was a pretty danger combination to fight against. Who was that woman? Was she the consciousness of his sword? I want answers. Hayate was disturbed from his musings by a groan as Naruto started coming too. Holy goddess what hit me. Oh right, it was that jackass who is my so-called father. Groaned Naruto as he tried to sit up. He quickly lay back down as the world started spinning. Glad to see you are finally awake. Naruto looked to the side and his eyes fell on the calm face of his new sensei Hayate. Sitting up again slowly Naruto looked around. Where am I? And where is Gekko Karite? Hayate handed him his blade, which was still in its sheath. Naruto took it with a nod of thanks and drew his blade. Looking over it and smiling he replaced it. Guess you want some answers huh? Stated Naruto. Hayate nodded and left the room for a second to come back with a glass of water. Naruto accepted the water with a word of gratitude. Where to begin? Well I guess I could start when I began training. I overdid it one day and ended up waking up in a sewer. Well I thought it was a sewer at the time but it turned out to be my mind itself. I felt a soothing presence amongst the dark and dark so I followed it. I ended up arriving in a large meadow with a full moon in the sky. Then this woman appeared. You know what she looks like I assume. Hayate nodded and Naruto continued. Well that saves time. Anyway she came to me because she felt like I was the only one who could help her retrieve the sword of Suzano. I promised I would do everything in my power to help and she bestowed her own sword upon me. That woman, is Sukuyomi Sama herself, aiding me in my endeavor. Naruto stopped and took a drink of water which Hayate digested the information he had received. Seriously, either this kid is a whacked out imagination or he is telling the truth, and to be honest I reckon he is being honest. Thought Hayate when another question struck him. Hey Naruto, why did you tell me all of this? Naruto looked at the man and thought for a moment. Simple, I told you because we are partners, and you are a fellow swordsman. I can trust you. Anyway thank you for the hospitality, but I really must be going. With that Naruto stood up and strapped his sheath on his back. Looking back at Hayate who was about to open his mouth Naruto guessed what he was going to say and cut him off. I have prior engagements. I thank you greatly for looking after me. I think I could begin to like you. With that Naruto left Hayate's apartment sprinting by a purple-haired woman who barely managed to get out of the way. The woman walked into Hayate's apartment and closed the door. Hayate-kun I'm home. What was that child doing running out of our apartment? She spat the child part out, like it was a bad taste in her mouth. Hayate noticed how she regarded Naruto and sighed. Naruto is now officially my student Yugo chan I'm his sensei until he turns Chunin then with the skills he displayed he will be fast-tracked to Anbu. Spoke Hayate, putting emphasis on Naruto's name. How could you teach that child? After what he has done to our families. Shouted Yugo as she stormed up to Hayate, expecting him to back down like he usually did when confronted with her rage. However it shocked her when he stood firm and resolute. And pray tell Yugo. 
What a baby, a mere hour old. Did to our clans? Yelled Hayate as he stood up and matched Yugo's glare. The purple-haired woman in front of him tried to calm down as she spoke in a terse voice. That thing isn't a child. It's the damn Kayubi given human form. Hayate growled and slammed his hand on the table. Does he act like a demon to you? Sure he is cold and rarely speaks but you would be the same if you were shunned your whole life. Besides he is an aspiring swordsman. A rare thing in Konoha. I want to pass on my techniques and I won't be able to do so to my child. He is the only hope I have. I'm going to have a shower then report Naruto passed his test. With that Hayate turned on his heel and stormed into the bathroom locking the door. Yugo watched him go with tears trailing down her cheeks. It was Kayubi's fault, he had corrupted him. Just you wait, I'll get my Hayate back. Thought the purple-haired girl darkly. Naruto dropped down outside the Hokage's office window and opened it, climbing into the office. It was surprising no one was here. Naruto just sat on the desk and waited for the Hokage. Sure enough 20 minutes later Minato walked through the door. Hello Yandaimi-sama, took your time didn't you? Every gawked at the young teenager sat on the Yandaimi's desk. You know Yandaimi-sama, you really need to upgrade your security for your office. I got in here without a hitch. What if I was a spy? Anyway I want to speak with you. Minato looked at his carbon copy sat on the table. Very well Naruto, if it is about my daughter please do not worry. She will be punished accordingly. Naruto chuckled and shook his head. His smirk made the Hokage grimace slightly. I was and I know a secret that will get you in trouble smirk. I'm not worried about that Yandaimi-sama, I'll get my revenge in due time. No I just want you to know. I know who I am, and I know my lineage. Naruto's smirk widened as he saw the Hokage's eyes widen. Then it dawned on him where the hidden document on Naruto went. Naruto himself had sneaked in before and found it. Remember, I know who I truly am now. I wonder what would happen if I told everyone. I will in due time. I'll just let you worry the when and the where. Laughing like a maniac Naruto leapt out of the open window and vanished from view. Leaving a sweating Hokage worried about what his disowned son had planned. A knock at the door startled Minato out of his thoughts. Commanding other person on the opposite side of the door to come in he was greeted by the four new Junin instructors. Sensei. Are you okay? You look a little pale. Asked Kakashi, never once looking up from his little orange book. Minato sighed, wondering how his only surviving student had turned into a pervert. Even beating from Kashina never swayed the man. It is nothing Kakashi don't worry about it. Anyway congratulations on passing your teams. Now then we need to discuss what to do about Naruto for now, as he has no team. Keep Naruto away from team 7 for the time being. Given what Sukuroka said he's going to be after her head for a while spoke Hayate, as Kakashi nodded in agreement. Minato sighed, he would be disciplining his daughter thruly tonight. What are you lot on about? What got Naruto so riled up that it made him actually show emotion other than indifference? Asked Kurenai. Once again, Hayate and Kakashi explained the situation. Hokage-sama, permission to use that genjutsu on her? Asked Kurenai in a voice that made acid sound as corrosive as water. Minato looked at them for a second, considering it, before shaking her head. No Kurenai, I won't let you use the genjutsu on them where it shows them getting raped. I don't need you potentially breaking her mind. Kurenai sighed and sat down on a chair. She knew what it was like to be an orphan, though Naruto was a jinchuriki on top of that. Does anyone have any idea what he went through? Thought the newest Junin. We'll make him do a few solo D-rank missions to settle him into them and then have him join Team 8 and 10 for a while. He will be going on your first C ranks, if you deem your genin good enough. That is a fact. I hope to see you soon for your missions, dismissed. All the junin nodded and left in a shunshin except Hayate. Hokage-sama, please answer me this, where raising Sukuroka go wrong? Minato sighed and looked out of the window in contemplation. As he thought back there had been a lot of times where her upbringing went wrong. I guess I can tell you. Sighed Minato, until a year ago Kashina or I were never really home. She was always on missions and I was always at the office. She was looked after by caretakers, however since they were looking after the daughter of the Hokage they spoiled her rotten, in hopes of her mentioning how good they were and getting them in my good books. However as you see, this resulted in Sukuroka developing into what she is. She really only started to see us when Kashina was badly injured during that mission last year. However we still couldn't get the bratty attitude out of her. 
And now she has annoyed someone who doesn't care who she is and will end up injured at some point. Minato sighed dejectedly, he felt guilty, and worried because he knew Naruto would carry out his threat. The both loathed his family, that much was clear in his eyes. Hayate sighed. Thank you for trusting me Hokage-sama. I'm going to look for my new student to see if I can teach him how to use a blade properly. He is already good with a sword, high chunin at least and I want to pass on my sword arts to him. With that Hayate vanished. Minato decided to pack up in the office and go home. He had some disciplining to do. A good old-fashioned ass kicking might make her learn a bit. Looking around his office Minato vanished in a yellow flash. Sukuroka was in hell, it was official. Her father had come on from work early and that made her happy, until he told her mother why he had come home early. That was when her torture began. Minato had dragged her to the training room for a sparring session. Sparring must have been a new word for beating. Minato was pounding into her in every direction. When she had asked what she had done wrong, her mother had made her father have a break. Then when she thought her mother had stopped her pain, Kashina began beating her around the floor. She may have suffered a terrible injury a year ago but she was still strong enough to put her daughter in her place. This continued well on into the night. Hayate sighed, he hadn't been able to find Naruto anywhere. It was impressive, though a genin hiding from an ex-Anbu member for at least five hours. Hayate knew Naruto would still be out training. It was nighttime and on top of that, there was also a full moon sitting high in the sky, meaning Naruto's sword was almost at peak power. Hayate raced off to the training fields, hoping to find Naruto in one of them. All he had to do was focus on where the moonlight shone brightest. He felt an increase of power and raced towards it. Little did he know there was someone else also hunting Naruto. Yugo was currently flying through training ground 28. It was where she found the most power emanating from. She was praying it was Naruto, hoping to kill him in hope of returning her Hayate back to normal. Sensing a massive influx of chakra she quickly made her way over to where the energy was coming from. She was surprised to see Naruto bathed in moonlight before hold his sword parallel to his body. Just as he was about to start, his body stiffened and he looked right at her. Naruto was looking at a tree. He knew it wasn't just a tree though, his chaos energy, as well as the moonlight, were screaming someone was watching him. Alright, come on out, I know you are out there. With that Naruto swung his sword and a beam of light shone directly on Yugo. Hmm, you are the one who was outside Hayate Sensei's apartment earlier, what do you want with me? Yugo was shocked into silence, this proved he was Kayubi in her eyes, no normal 13 year old could sense an Anbu. How did you know I was here, Kayubi? Ah who cares, as soon as you die Hayate-kun will be free of your spell. By the way, the person who'll send you to hell is Azuki Yugo. Spoke the purple-haired woman pulling out a sword. Naruto sighed and held his sword in a loose ready stance. Yet only fool who thinks I am Kayubi? Don't you lot ever learn? I must have killed over 300 foolish civilians in self-defense. Spoke Naruto in a bored tone of voice. Body tensing slightly as he saw her rush at him and swung her blade. Naruto quickly brought his blade up and blocked it with the flat edge of his sword. HMPH, if you're aiming to kill me you're gonna have to do better than that. With a grunt Naruto pushed the older female back and settled into a defensive stance. Naruto then formed a half seal and began focusing chakra. Light sudden cascaded around Naruto as he began to glow. Yugo realized he and his blade were actually absorbing the moonlight. Not wanting to find out what would happen Yugo sprinted at her opponent and whipped out a kanai in her free hand. Swinging the kanai she expected to stab him in the neck, however there was a clash of metal and she watched the blade of the kanai stab into the floor. She however was still holding the handle. Naruto swung Gekko Karite, aiming to slice his opponent in half. Yugo dodged and quickly put distance between them. Close combat fighting is useless against me. The only way you can beat me is by being faster than me. And to be honest you seem to pride yourself on sneak attacks. You have underestimated me, and now you'll pay for it. Yugo tensed as she saw her opponent slide into a crouch. She leapt to the side and saw Naruto's blade impact with the earth she was standing on a moment earlier. She gawked at him. I pride myself on speed. My speed has saved me in a lot of situations. Naruto was off again his fist impacting into the older woman's stomach knocking the wind out of her. Yugo smirked and swung her blade. Naruto noticed and was impressed. She took the hit to try and land a killing blow on him. To bad the swing was far too slow. 
Tapping into his chaos energy his sword came up and blocked the blade a foot before it hit him in the chest. He was rewarded by a high kick to his jaw, dislocating it and sending him backwards. Yugo smirked as Naruto flew through the air. Her smirk vanished however when Naruto immediately spun in mid-air and landed feet first onto a tree. She watched in morbid fascination as she saw Naruto relocate his jaw like it was nothing. That was extremely impressive. I underestimated you, I apologize. You are a splendid kunoichi and I would have loved to have gotten to know you. There is no point getting to know a dead person though. Spoke Naruto monotonously and Yugo shivered. It was like talking to Itachi again. Naruto raced at Yugo again and went into a flurry of quick slashes and stabs, trying to overwhelm Yugo in speed. He knew she had more skill and slightly more power than he did, however it seemed he was slightly faster than her. Yugo kept on the defensive, marveling at the speed her opponent possessed. For a 13-year-old to be this fast was unreal. She ducked under one slash and tried to attack Naruto back, but was instantly on the defense again as Naruto's sword was coming on the backswing of the last attack. Having no choice but to defend with her sword she raised her blade and reinforced it with chakra. She gasped when she saw the odd-looking blade bit into her own almost slicing the blade in two pieces. Naruto took this moment of shock to launch a hard left hook straight to her face, empowered by chaos energy, breaking her nose and sending her slamming into a tree, hitting her head hard. Removing his sword from her blade he examined the opponent's sword whilst walking towards her. This is a remarkable blade, very well looked after and well maintained. It is a pity its owner was so stupid. Let me ask you something. If I was the Kayubi, do you really think Konoha would be standing right now? If I were Kayubi, why aren't I a massive fox destroying the village as we speak? Think about those questions in the afterlife. Farewell, Azuki Yugo. Naruto swung his sword down only to find someone grabbing his arm. Hayate had arrived just as he heard Naruto say she was trying to kill him and his monologue as he walked towards her looking at her blade admiring it. Hayate was stunned that Yugo was slumped against a tree with blood cascading out from her nose. When he heard Naruto say something about afterlife and raise his blade, Hayate didn't know he could move so quickly. His hand wrapped around his student's forearm and pulled him away violently, sending his student back a few meters. Standing in front of Yugo protectively Hayate glared at his young student. Naruto, why are you trying to kill a fellow leaf shinobi? Asked the junin as he slid into a loose stance, his hand reaching for his blade. Yugo had closed her eyes after listening to the boy speak. She had thought about what he had said and resigned to her fate feeling like she deserved it. She heard the blade cutting through the air until a small scuffle and a masculine voice. Looking up she saw Hayate in front of her hand on his sword handle glaring at Naruto. Her eyes snapped to the teen and saw the same emotionless gaze in them. She watched as he sheathed his sword wordlessly and noticed the glow around him vanishing. That was when he started to speak. Shouldn't you ask Ms. Azuki that question? She attacked me, I only attack if provoked. Spoke the blonde teenager as he pulled out Gekko Karite once more and stabbed it into the ground and uttered a small prayer before sheathing it again. Yugo looked confused then noticed Hayate lowering his hand as well. Looking at Yugo, Hayate wordlessly asked her the question. Look, Naruto cut in, my training tonight was ruined and she needs to sort that nose out. How about I come round yours tomorrow at 9 and we can discuss this. Cool. With that Naruto vanished, not waiting for a reply. Hayate sighed, this was not how he wanted to find Naruto, beating up his fiance. Turning around he picked up his love and said, you got a lot of explaining to do. With that he raced in the direction of the hospital. Yugo looked down and whispered three words that Hayate could barely hear. I'm sorry, Hayate. The sickly Junin smiled slightly and carried on heading to the medical building. No worries, you still got a lot to explain though. Yugo managed a weak smile before she moaned about the pain in her head. It was early next morning when Hayate and Yugo got back to their apartment. The nurses at the hospital had been adamant about not letting her leave until the morning to make sure there was no permanent damage to her head. They walked to the front door to see it ajar. They both looked at each other and drew their blades. Sliding the door open gently they heard a small noise coming from the living room. Diving into the room they saw Naruto leaning back on the couch, sword resting on his lap as he caressed it. Looking up he spoke up. Took your time didn't you, was thinking you weren't going to show. Both adults looked at the time and saw it was quarter past nine. 
Sorry Naruto, Yugo just got released from hospital because what happened last night. Now will someone explain what the hell was going on last night? Said Hayate as he sat on a chair looking at the other two people in the room. Yugo sat down on the opposite side of the table with her head down. I think Ms. Azuki should be the one to explain. If she tells a lie then I will correct it. I will no lie however. I will hand over Gekko Karite if I do. Said Naruto in a relaxed voice as he kept stroking his blade, which seemed to be pulsing as if it were content. Yugo explained everything, how the fight went and why she attacked him. How he sliced through her kunai and overpowered her with his techniques till when he had her at his mercy. When she finished, Yugo walked over to Naruto and did something that surprised him. She dropped to her knees, bowed her head and apologized. Naruto looked at her and raised his sword. Yugo closed her eyes and waited for the blow. It was her turn to be surprised when she felt a light tap on her head. You are forgiven, count yourself lucky, I do not forgive easily, it is only being what you mean to Hayate Sensei that you are forgiven. I must also apologize, I ruined your blade, take this. Naruto held out her sword to her and a sum of money. This should be half of what you need to repair your sword, given we are both at fault here. I am happy I fought you though. I still have a long way to go though, I only won because you underestimated me. Continued Naruto as he rested the items in her arms. With that he stood up and began walking towards the door. Nodding his head in farewell he began to leave when Hayate called out to him. Naruto, meet me at training grounds number 21 in two hours. We'll then discuss what we will be doing for the day. Naruto nodded once more and left with a backwards wave of his hand. Hayate looked at his fiance and sighed. Yugo looked at, at Hayate and walked over to him. Wrapping her arms around him and giving him a kiss she whispered, I'm sorry Hayate, you were right. That wasn't a demon I fought earlier. It was a lonely teenage boy who was tired of the hate and pain. She began to sob. Hayate picked her up bridal style and kissed her. He carried her into the bedroom, closing the door. A, and I think we will leave it there folks. Let them make up carrot carrot. Two and a half hours later at training ground 21 we find Naruto running through his list of ninjutsu. He was about to leave the training field and head into the fours when Hayate appeared, looking slightly disheveled. Naruto's sharp nose caught the hint of sex and smirked. Just as Hayate was about to apologize Naruto cut him off. Forget it sensei, I can smell what you were doing. Hope it was worthwhile. Did she like you sword? Spoke Naruto indifferently as he walked closer to his instructor. Hayate opened his mouth but no words came out, his face turning red he settled for looking away. So what are we doing today? Missions, training or discussing? Asked Naruto as he stopped in front of Hayate and looked at the older swordsman inquisitively. Hayate sighed, somehow he knew this wouldn't end well. We'll be doing some D-rank missions to start off with until 2 in the afternoon. Then we can plan from there. Naruto, instead of acting up like most genin, simply nodded and began walking off to the Hokage's tower. Meet ya there sensei. The longer I take the less worthless missions I have to do. Hayate grinned, that's why he never complained, he knew it was pointless and was devising ideas to cut down the time he needed to do them. Smart thinking Naruto, I might join you on your way to the tower. The duo grinned and strolled towards their destination. They arrived at the Hokage's office at 12.30, having taken 45 minutes to get there. Needless to say the Yandaimi was slightly annoyed. Where the hell were you guys? You're 30 minutes later than I thought you would be, exclaimed the older blonde. Naruto just looked at him and said bluntly. I took my time because I felt like it. I'll be on time for proper missions that people actually need ninjas to do, not something stupid like painting a damn fence. Spoke Naruto icily, just as Team 7 walked in. Naruto took one look at the team and faced the Hokage again. Look just give me a mission and I can leave. The blonde-haired boy snarled as he forced himself not to draw his blade and attack Sukuroka again. Minato realized what was happening and quickly assigned him to walk an old lady's dog. Naruto quickly accepted and made a few hand signs. Doten. D-O-C-H-U-E-I-G-Y-O no jutsu. One. Spoke the young teen as he sunk into the floor. Hayate looked at where his student had been and sighed. With a quick wave he had shunshined in a whirl of leaves, leaving most of the people in the room confused but Minato and Team 7. An hour and a half had passed and it was now 2 in the afternoon. Naruto was in a training ground yet again, 
engaging his opponents in a massive taijutsu contest. Given the clones were made out of his chaos energy, they were all nearly as good as him. The only way he could destroy them was by using his superior speed to evade their attacks. Things got harder when he got down to the last three. He was tired and the clones decided to tag-team him. He was able to dodge for a while but was wearing down fast. Destroying two clones by stabbing them both in the neck with a kanai he didn't realize the third clone until it rammed a kanai into his shoulder blade. Crying out in pain Naruto's eyes turned blood red and his pupils turned to slits. Spinning around and lashing out with his new claws the clone was gutted and dispelled. Hayate had been watching the whole fight. He was impressed with Naruto's stamina. He had made 50 what looked like shadow clones and sparred with all of them on him. The fight became more intense as it went on until he saw the finale. He watched Naruto get stabbed by a kunai. Just as he was about to jump and he noticed the now more feral look in Naruto's eyes before he gutted the last clone with a claw. Worried that the Kayubi was taking over he was about to jump in with a seal when he saw the malicious intent recede and Naruto slump to his knees and pull the knife out. Well done Naruto, I'm extremely impressed. You were fighting for half an hour, do you wanna get your shoulder fixed up though? Naruto looked up and smiled slightly as he saw his teacher appear in front of him. Standing up again he shook his head and replied. Nah it's cool. Furball will fix it up in a few seconds. Anyway you said you wanted to speak with me? Queried Naruto as he sat down, facing Hayate as he relaxed, feeling the powerful tainted chakra of the Kayubi run into his wound, closing it. Yeah. Naruto as you may have guessed, I have an incurable illness. It will probably kill me before I have kids old enough to actually train. I want to teach you my clan's sword style, so you can pass it on to my children. Naruto was stunned. He knew this was a big request. It wasn't every day someone came up to you and asked for you to carry on their sword style. How long do you have to live, Hayate Sensei? Asked Naruto somberly, one of the only people that didn't judge him and he was terminally ill. Hayate noticed him clench his fist, then relax again as he looked up. If you ever have children I will teach them your style. Since I have my own style it will near impossible to learn another but I will gladly pass on the scrolls of your clan. Hayate nodded simply. He knew that asking Naruto to give up his style to learn his wasn't right. Everyone felt different with a sword. What type of style is yours Naruto? I haven't seen it before. Naruto smiled and drew his sword. Looking from his blade, to his teacher, then back to his blade he charged at Hayate who quickly drew his own sword and blocked. Spar with me sensei. I'll gladly tell you where my style comes from. Hayate nodded and they both began to clash swords. Hayate was impressed yet again. He was panting heavily and had a few nicks and scraps. He looked over at the person who had requested the spar. Naruto was struggling to get up yet again from a vicious kick. He had multiple cuts and a particularly bad slash across his back. They had been fighting for 30 minutes. Impressive since Naruto was still worn out from his taijutsu training. Well Naruto, where did you learn your sword style? Asked Hayate as he lay down next to Naruto and watched as the clouds went by. My style is called Kudori Sukiaiba, too. It is the style Sukuyomi-sama created to match this exact blade. Apparently being a deity gets boring sometimes so she spend about 500 years figuring out this style. Never ever say she has no life. I thought I was gonna die. It was torture. This confused Hayate. What was Naruto going on about? When he asked his only reply was Naruto rocking backwards and forwards, mumbling about falling moon rocks and target practice. Raising his eyebrow at his usually stoic student Hayate stood up yet again and faced Naruto. They spent the rest of the day training Naruto's sword skills. Hayate was happy to see someone take such an interest in sword fighting at young age. Naruto was a sponge at listening to his advice, though thanks to the unusual design, Naruto was able to easily adept at strikes. The sword was very light and extremely well balanced, from what Hayate could tell by holding it that one time on the sword's orders. It was 7 in the evening when they finally called it a day. Hayate asked Naruto if he would be willing to come over for dinner tonight, which the younger swordsman politely declined. Hayate nodded and with a wave, vanished in a swirl of leaves. Two weeks later. They had kept up this routine now for two weeks. The exact same things each day. Naruto doing the D-rank missions. It seems another thing that could break Naruto's calm composure was Tor the cat. 
Many occasions Hayate had to step in to stop Naruto killing the cat. After yet another mission of catching the hell spawn, which had narrowly dodged an eclipsing flash sent at it by Naruto. It was safely back in the arms of the extremely fat Daimo's wife's arms. They were about to request another mission before the cat escaped, when Team 7 burst into the office. Daddy give me a C-rank mission. Naruto grit his teeth yet again as the shrill voice of Sukuroka filled the room. He ignored Aruka's lecture about how the mission ranking system worked knowing full well the brat was going to get her way. Sure enough three minutes later he heard Minato speak. Well if Kakashi thinks you are ready for AC rank then I'll let you go on one. However Hayate has to agree that Naruto is able to go on one as well as he will be joining you. Bearing in mind if you take this mission then it will be an escort mission. Naruto is perfectly capable of taking a C rank mission, Hokage Sama. In my opinion I reckon he could take a low C rank mission alone and come home alive. Spoke Hayate proudly as he bowed slightly to Minato. Naruto glanced at Hayate with a hint of a smile. Minato nodded and then turned to Kakashi. My team is perfectly capable of AC rank. Don't worry Hayate, I won't let anything happen to your student. Hayate looking at Kakashi with a smile of gratitude whilst Naruto nodded his head in Kakashi's direction. Why isn't the loser's sensei coming with us? Asked Sukiroka as she looked at the two adults. Naruto twitched at the jab and explained. Hayate sensei has a terminal illness and cannot do anything strenuous for long periods of time. Therefore he is only able to leave the village for quick day type missions. Since this is an escort mission and we will be gone a while sensei will be to sick to be of use. Can we please see the client? The adults in the room nodded at the explanation and the Hokage began to speak again. Please bring in Tazuna-san. The client was a large man reaching about six foot in height and quite round. He also had a massive backpack slung over his shoulders and a bottle of sake in his right hand. He took one look around the room and yelled out. This is the protection I paid for. A scarecrow, a man who looked like he will drop dead by the coughing and four brats. Can they actually catch a cat? Asked the old drunkard. Naruto's eye began twitching and the client's bottle shattered. Only the adult ninja in the room had caught the movement. A kanai was embedded in the wall, the exact trajectory of Naruto's now outstretched arm. It is unwise to insult the people you have paid to protect you Tazuna-san. You paid for a C-rank mission, therefore why did you expect to have fully qualified ninja? We also have one of the strongest junin in the village on our team, you'll be fine. Also please sober up before we leave the for the mission. Guarding a drunken escort is dangerous and you might not be able to follow our orders correctly. Spoke Naruto in a monotone which began to creep Tazuna out. Nodding shakily the old man regained his bearings and spoke once more. Very well, at least one of the brats isn't useless. Anyway you are to escort me to wave country and to protect me until I finish the bridge I'm building. Spoke Tazuna. Very well team, we meet at the west gate in half an hour. Pack what you think you'll need for a C-rank mission. I'll bring spare kits just in case. Till then. With that Kakashi vanished in a swirl of smoke and leaves. Naruto turned to Hayate and bowed slightly. I will see you soon sensei. I will continue my training and will not let you down. Farewell. With that Naruto made some hand signs and once again sunk into the floor and disappeared. Half an hour later Naruto walked through the west gate to see Sukuroka and Tazuna already waiting for him. Hello Tazuna-san glad you aren't late, have you sobered up a bit now? Asked Naruto as he walked over to his client and held out his hand. Tazuna looked at his hand and raised an eyebrow. I thought we got off on the wrong foot. Name is Naruto Uzumaki, pleasure to meet the sober you. Tazuna chuckled slightly and began to shake Naruto's hand. Yeah sorry about earlier kid, you know my name so I won't bother. Naruto nodded and sat down on a tree branch. Five minutes later and the rest of the team had finally showed up. Okay Naruto I have already drilled my team in on what to take for AC rank mission but I want to check you know what to take. Also for this mission you can call me Kakashi Sensei, or Kakashi Taiko, it's your call. List off what you have, also please list off the jutsu you know. Spoke Kakashi as he walked over to Naruto and knelt down beside him. Very well Kakashi Taiko. I have my blade Gekko Karite. 15 kanai, 25 shuriken and 40 senban needles. I have a sleeping bag, no tent as it will be an obstruction if we are attacked at night. I have two spare sets of clothes and 10 ration bars. My jutsu list consists of, doten, 
DOCHUEIGYO no Jutsu. 1. Doten. GANCHUSO. 3. Doten. Shinju ZANSHU no Jutsu. 4. Doten. DORYUHEKI. 5. Finally, my only a rank Jutsu. Shuriken KAGEBUNSHIN no Jutsu. 6. My blade has a wide range of attacks, but it would take ages explaining them. Naruto finished as he showed Kakashi his equipment. The older man I smiled and nodded his consent. Very good Naruto. After checking everyone's equipment just to make sure and giving Sakura a whole new backpack, because she had so much cosmetic stuffed into a suitcase. Naruto sighed and quietly apologized to Tazuna. Naruto was extremely shocked to see Sukuroka had actually packed pretty well for the mission. Bar having too much ramen, she was pretty well stocked. They had been walking down the road for a few hours now. Naruto had blocked out Sakura's and Sukuroka's mundane drivel as he focused his senses. Though it may be a C-rank mission, Naruto had the funny feeling it was going to get much more complicated. They had been walking for a few hours when Naruto noticed a puddle in the middle of the road. Frowning slightly his hand rose behind his head as if to scratch it. In reality it was to draw Gekko Karait and swing in one swift motion. Kakashi noticed Naruto tense up slightly as he looked at the puddle and smiled silently. Hayate had trained the boy well. Kakashi wondered what the blonde was capable of. Glancing at his students he quickly formulated a plan. Naruto glanced at Kakashi and could practically hear the gears turning in his head. Deciding to play along for now he ignored the puddle and carried on. Naruto spun round quickly as he heard the sound of chains clinking. Team 7 also spun around and gasped in shock as they saw Kakashi get shredded to pieces. Ah oh, that's your game Taiko? Pretty clever, measuring your genin's reaction to your death. Thought Naruto as he leapt into action closely followed by Sasuke. Naruto quickly took the ninja on the left delivering a barrage of flowing punches and kicks, flowing gracefully from one strike to the next. Naruto had noticed that the ninja only attacked with his gauntlet, making Naruto suspect it was poison. It was easy dodging just a single attack at a time. Using his superior speed and flexibility Naruto dodged all of the strikes the opponent tried to deliver. Naruto glanced over at Sasuke's position just as he slammed his fist into his opponent's throat, crushing it, suffocating him. He noticed the Uchiha was using the intercepting fist, a style designed for the Sharingan, however, Sasuke didn't have the Sharingan, so what was the point? It made the style useless in Naruto's opinion. Naruto watched the enemy ninja slip past Sasuke and race for Tazuna and the girls at mid chunin speed, the girls who had froze up unable to move. The enemy reached Sukuroka first and drew back his claw to thrust into her chest. She closed her eyes and waited for the pain only to hear a screech of metal on metal. Opening her eyes she saw Naruto in front of her with Gekko Karite blocked the claw. She gaped at Naruto who was struggling to hold back the weapon. What the hell are you waiting for you stupid moron? Move! roared Naruto at the petrified girl. When she failed to respond and Naruto was about to be pushed into the ground the missing nin flew sideways sharply, impacting with a tree knocking him out. Naruto looked over at Sasuke who still had his foot in the air. Kakashi suddenly appeared out of nowhere with an eye smile. Great job Naruto, Sasuke. You took the mission priority over my death and engaged without hesitation. I'm sorry Sakura, Sukuroka, I didn't expect you to freeze up like that. Naruto are you handling your kill all right? Everyone's eyes snapped over to Naruto who looked at the corpse and looked away back at the rest of the group with an emotionless mask. Yeah I'm fine, this isn't my first kill so don't worry, I won't drag the mission down. Team 7 was shocked beyond belief when they heard that Naruto, one of the most average in the year, had already killed. Kakashi nodded, making a mental note to keep an eye on Naruto and to speak with Hayate about Naruto. Putting that to the back of his mind for now Kakashi turned around to question Tazuna about the mission. After getting the reason Sukuroka and Sakura wanted to turn back to the village. Fine then, go home. I'm staying with Tazuna though. If we do not complete this mission hundreds, possibly thousand will die. I won't let that happen. I'm staying. Spoke Naruto calmly as he walked over to Tazuna and turned around. If Naruto is going then I will too. Spoke Sasuke as he also walked over to Tazuna. Naruto nodded to the black-haired male and got a nod in return. 
Well since the girls are too weak and scared, Kakashi, are you going to escort them back to Konoha? Asked Naruto as he glanced at the two girls and smirked. They were both fumed as they shouted simultaneously. WHO said we are afraid. We'll show you loser. Kakashi and Sasuke looked at Naruto, who caught both of their eyes and whistled innocently as the two girls stormed over to Tazuna, grabbed him, and dragged him down the road to wave. Am I good or not? Asked a smirking Naruto as the three males of the team hurried after the girls. They had been walking for two days and they finally came to the port to see a boatman standing on the pier waiting for them. After greeting him they pushed off and the boatman began to row to wave. This ended up with Sukuroka whining loudly about it going to slow when Naruto spoke in an aggravated voice. Shut up girl. The reason we aren't using the engine is because it is too loud. Sounds carries over water amazingly well so your screeching will probably give away our position if you don't shut up. Spoke Naruto in a quiet yet fierce voice. Sukuroka was about to snap back at Naruto when Kakashi placed a hand on her should and shook his head. Team 7 and Tazuna made ideal chatter as they crossed the water. Naruto however was stood at the front of the boat looking towards Wave making ideal chatter with Sukuyomi. He didn't realize that Sukuroka had asked him a question until she tapped him on the shoulder. Loser didn't you hear me? I asked what you were doing. Sukuroka asked the blonde, glad she had his attention finally. Naruto glanced at her and then returned to looking out to the country again. I'm staying on guard, keeping an eye out. Gatu hired ninja to come after us and they were chunin. Once he gets wind of their defeat he'll hire stronger ninja to come after us. Spoke Naruto as the boat hit shore. After thanking the boatman Team 7 and Naruto walked in the direction of Tazuna's house. The island was extremely foggy and this put Naruto on edge. I don't like this, something doesn't feel right. Sukaimi sama stand by for battle just in case. Thought Naruto as all his senses were spread as best they could. I don't like it either Naruto-kun, this isn't natural mist. The fake moon is already in the sky. Naruto came to again and glanced at the sky behind him and smiled at the familiar silver sphere in the sky. Thirty minutes later Naruto's senses went haywire and Gekko Karite was buried into a tree. Everyone immediately stood on guard as Naruto pulsed his chakra and his blade shot back to his hand. Walking over to the tree his sword had sliced into he saw a small white rabbit. This instantly put him on guard as he felt a small amount of killing intent directed his way. Both girls were about to scream at Naruto when Kakashi shouted out. Get down! Yelled the silver-haired adult as he tackled Tazuna to the floor. Naruto reacted quickly and dragged the two young Kunoichi to the floor with him. Sasuke hit the dirt as well. Naruto was the first to get up and draw his blade. Looking around he suddenly sensed a massive chakra source nearby. Whirling around he saw a man standing on a massive Zanbatu looking down at the group. By this time everyone else had gotten to their feet and had surrounded Tazuna. Momochi Zabuza, demon of the bloody mist. Spoke Kakashi as he stared at the man who was wrapped up in bandages. Naruto's eyes widened. This was an A-ranked missing nin of the mist. Oh fuck me. We are up against an A-ranked ninja. We're screwed. Spoke Naruto in a calm voice as he made a half ram seal and began to gather chaos energy. Well well well, copy nin Kakashi and a bunch of brats? The one doesn't seem to be such a brat. At least he reads the bingo book. Spoke Zabuza as he continued to stare down at the ninja. Naruto's sword glowed and he vanished, surprising everyone in the area. Zabuza's instinct screaming at him to duck. As he did so he saw a few hairs falling in front of him and he shunshined away, into the middle of the clearing. Naruto appeared in front of him and swung his sword again. Zabuza swung his massive sword and sent Naruto backwards with the force of the swing. Impressive sword kid. Not as good as my kabikari honcho though. Smirked Zabuza as Naruto skidded to a stoop next to Kakashi. Naruto looked at the sword and back at its wilder. Okay two questions. Question 1. You call that a sword? It's a slab of metal with a edge. Question 2. Are you compensating for something with that thing? Asked Naruto with a straight face whilst Sasuke smirked. Kakashi I smiled and Tazuna and the girls burst out laughing. There was a tick above Zabaza's eye. Damned brat K-I-R-I-G-A-K-U-R-A -I -I -A -A no jutsu. 7. Suddenly a large amount of mist encased the seven people immediately putting six of them on guard. Suddenly killing intent flooded the area petrifying the genin of Team 7. 
Naruto quickly responded to the zero visibility by moving extremely close to the position he remembered Zabuza being in. He stopped close to the normally drunk old man and they caught each other's eye. Naruto nodded and his blade began to glow silver. A sense of peace washed over the old man who looked gratefully at the young teen. Naruto felt the air move in front of Tazuna and reacted instinctively, by thrusting his sword in the direction he felt the disturbance. He noticed he had stabbed Tazuna but something was wrong, he was bleeding water. Suddenly his body turned completely blue and fell to the ground into the form of a puddle. Naruto reacted swiftly by tackling Zabuza out of the way as he appeared behind Tazuna and swung his massive sword. There was no way he would be able to block that kind of strength, without putting them both in danger. Luckily though Kakashi had a kunai pointed at Zabuza's neck before he could follow up his attack. It's over Zabuza, give up, said Kakashi, his Sharingan eye spinning. The swordsman scoffed as he fell into a puddle on the floor. Kakashi looked shocked for a few seconds before Naruto yelled out. Taiko. Behind you. Kakashi ducked to see the massive Zanbatu fly over his head. Zabuza, seeing his initial attack fail, slammed his blade into the ground, using it as leverage sent his foot flying into Kakashi's face. The masked Junin was sent flying into the mist and all anyone else heard was a loud splash. Suddenly the mist cleared up and everyone saw Kakashi trapped in a sphere of water and the killing intent vanished. Naruto noticed the genin of Team 7 were still shaking. Reacting quickly he made three clones and dragged his teammates over to his position. Seeing the hadn't snapped out of their fear-induced stupor yet he delivered a hard smack to their faces. They all recoiled sharply, before glaring at him. Glad you lot are finally back in the land of the living, now we need to free Taiko. Any ideas? Asked Naruto as he raised his blade as two water clones of Zabuza formed out of the water. Why don't you just attack him? You did well by yourself the first time spat Sukuroka acidly as she watched her two male team mates slip into fighting stances. Naruto glanced at the girl before he sized up his opponent. I caught him off guard last time, that won't happen again. This time as much as I hate to admit it, I need to work with you three. Eclipsing flash. Naruto swung his blade and a wave of silver light burst out, impacting with the Zabuza clone and blowing it to kingdom come. Zabuza instantly appeared in front of the sword-wielding teen and delivered a hard kick to his chest, launching him into a tree. Sasuke and Sukuroka tried stabbing the missing nin with kunai. They were too slow however and both ended up getting sent flying. Sasuke got hit with the flat end of the sword, whilst Sukuroka got a kick to the stomach. Sakura backed up, keeping herself in front of Tazuna. Naruto, who had recovered quickly, saw Zabuza nearing Tazuna and Sakura. Moving quickly he blasted from the tree he had slammed into, running the water clone through stopping in front of the undeniably weakest of the group. Whipping out a Fuma shuriken Naruto yelled out, Oi Sukuroka! Catch! The girl blurrily looked up to see a closed shuriken fly at her. She looked back at Naruto, who was busy in keeping another two water clones busy, and Sasuke who was slowly pushing himself to his feet. She then saw the real Zabuza completely unguarded. All of a sudden Naruto's plan hit her in the face. She remembered one of the jutsu he knew and she sprang into the air. Rotating to give her more leverage and power she channeled chaos energy into her arm and swung as hard as she could directly at Zabuza. Naruto noticed the shuriken flying at Zabuza and smirked. Gekko Karite glowed once more and with a yell, Naruto launched another eclipsing flash at the clones, destroying them both. Throwing his sword into the air and focusing his chakra on the shuriken, Naruto ran through hand signs before calling out, N-I-N-P-O-U, Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, the giant shuriken multiplied from 1 to 20. Zabuza smirked as he saw the shuriken flying towards him. That smirked vanished when he heard the blonde cry out his jutsu and the shuriken became 20. He was then faced with a choice. Either keep Kakashi prisoner and get impaled by 20 massive shurikens, or release Kakashi and dodge the projectiles. Both options were bad in the Mist Nin's books but the latter option made it so he would come out of the attack alive. Releasing the prison, both adult ninja sunk under the water. Naruto smirked as he saw his plan work. Well, it seems she does have some brains, not bad. Thought the blonde as raced towards the water as Zabuza emerged, determined not to give him a breather. Sprinting over the water, catching everyone by surprise he swung, using Zabuza's shock to his advantage. 
The adult ninja regained his senses just fast enough to dodge. Though there was now a small nick on the side of his face. With a roar of rage Zabuza swung his sword, slamming Naruto into the water. Naruto resurfaced just as he saw a massive wave flying at him, thanks to the water dragons Kakashi and Zabuza produced. Oh come on! yelled the blonde as he was swept under once again. When he resurfaced once more he saw Kakashi charging at Zabuza when two Senban needles flew out of nowhere impaling themselves into the missing nin's neck. Naruto watched Kakashi check to make sure Zabuza was dead and then exchange a few words with the hunter who had killed him. Picking himself up he strode over to his team, giving them all an acknowledging nod. Everyone watched as Kakashi began walking towards them, before faltering and face planting into the ground. Once he had been diagnosed with chakra exhaustion and Tazuna revealed they weren't too far from his house, Naruto swung Kakashi's limp body over his shoulder fireman style and picked up his blade, which was been lodged into a rock. Holding it in a loose yet steady grip Naruto spoke up. Well let's get moving to Tazuna's then. I wanna get there and drop Kakashi in a bed. No one disagreed with the blonde and followed their client. Half an hour later a building came into view. It isn't much, but it's home spoke to Zuna in a reminiscing voice. He swung the front door open and announced his presence loudly. Naruto watched a pretty woman who looked to be in her mid-twenties run into the hall and hug Tazuna. Naruto gave a small smile and the familial display as Tazuna introduced them. Naruto walked up to her, still with Kakashi on his shoulder. Excuse me Tsunami Tenshi, where could I dump our Taiko? Tsunami blushed at the suffix the blonde male with the sword as well as partially in embarrassment that she hadn't realized the unconscious male slung over his shoulder. She also noticed the blade he was holding had some blood on it. Sure, Naruto-san, follow me please. Naruto nodded and followed the woman down the hall and up a flight of stairs. She led him through a door that had a few beds lined up. Naruto took the hint and placed Kakashi onto of one of them. Then he followed her once more back into what seemed to be the living room. Taiko is in bed. I expected he'll wake up tomorrow. Spoke Naruto as he ripped a piece of frayed cloth off of his shirt, slightly revealing his already muscular abs and began wiping the blood off of Gekko Karite. Three pairs of eyes were immediately drawn to the flesh Naruto had just exposed. We should set up a schedule to keep watch. Just because Zabuza died doesn't mean we can slack off. Sasuke spoke up from the corner of the room. Naruto looked at the Uchiha survivor and nodded his head in agreement. True, Gatu will still have thugs around. We will take watch in two hour shifts tonight. We all need to recover. I'll let you three decide. I don't mind when my shift is but I'm going to scout the perimeter now. With that Naruto threw the rag in the bin and swung his now clean sword onto his back and left the house. And cut. The story ends here. Remember to subscribe and like this video.